Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. Guess who's back on the round table? That's right, the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I am well. I've been away for a little while, obviously, but uh, I'm back and, and ready to uh, offer any support and help I can. Well, it's great to see you. You know who's also is great to see? The most feared woman in the country. Mimi Schmidt, Mimi, how are you? Ah, happy to be back. I had my wedding anniversary last week, so. Oh, nice happy to anniversary. Back. Thank you. That's, that's great. Speaking of great marriages, we get the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. <laughs> Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Happy wife, happy life. Speaking Agreed. Speaking of happy wife, happy life. We get two buddies, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Marco. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, I did. I did. Thank you. Um, which kind of leads me to let's get back into shape with the cyclist, even though he's out of, out of commission right now. Tate Litchfield, lots looking over Tate's shoulder. If you haven't got checked out lots, go to landgeek.com forward slash, forward slash lots. Tate, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, really good. Happy to be on the call. Happy to see uh, our numbers have gone back up against. It looks like uh, the people are finally going to get what they wanted. And that's Mimi and Eric back on our call. Absolutely. I mean, just selfishly, just the round table is just not the same without the full group for sure. But, you know, I don't know if we're going to be nice to him today, but man, do we all love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist, your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com, forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm confused. Why wouldn't you be nice to me? Because there's always this, this little tension depending on the, on the topic. Well, we can definitely create some tension with this topic. Yeah. So what is the topic, Scott Todd? Uh, we're going to refer that to Eric. There's the tension right there. I'm not so giving it. Is. Eric's giving it. I, I almost feel like this whole podcast, Eric should speak the whole entire time. Right. Well, isn't that what we planned? We planned the whole thing. Well, we'll just ask you questions and you and Mimi can just take turns answering them. Perfect. <laughs> so the, 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 topic for right today, <laughs> the topic for today uh, really comes from office hours last night. There was a discussion around open rates of Black Friday emails and just how in general uh, people's campaigns went. So um, that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so open rates for Black Friday. Um, Mimi, why don't we just start with you? What is a typical open rate and how did your Black Friday promotions go? My open rate was twice as high as it has been for my deal of the week for the last month or so. And I really think that was because every Friday, uh, my VA, marketing VA was sending out, it's the, the, it's coming, it's coming. These are some of the properties with just pictures, right? Details, you know, are, are coming. Um, so I was happy to see my open rate so high. It was around, it was around 40%. So I was happy to see that. Um, I did notice I got a lot more activity on the terms deals as opposed to cash deals. People were much more interested in the terms deals and more activity when there are um, terms numbers in the headings versus another terms deal where the heading is, is has no numbers in the in it, so that's that's what I found. That's where I was mo more successful. Interesting. Is am I the only person that their eyebrows raised up when Mimi said forty percent open rate? No, you're not. Scott's yeah. Eric's head's nodding. Tate's nodding. Mike Zeno is not even paying attention, Scott. I was looking at my click rate. My, yeah, mine usually is not that high. I was kind of surprised. It actually uh, had been going down recently in my BN, VA, and I was like, why does it keep going down? So I was kind of surprised myself. I do have one county where my open rates are much, much higher than in some of the other more investor-intense uh, counties. 
So that does help pull it up, pull my numbers up. All right, Mike Zano, I apologize for the 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 careless comment. No, no, no. Paying no. attention. It's, um, it's, it's so. I know it's. I'm, what is your what is, what, what, what what was your open rate? How it's less than twenty percent. Less than twenty percent. Okay. So Mimi wins that one. It's like the old uh, what's that old game? Luke Kane wins. Mimi Schmidt wins. <laughs> <laughs> So, so how did it go for you? Yeah. Yeah, no, it went well. We sold a couple properties. I mean, I think, you know, uh, not everything's a knock it out of the park, but consistency, just like any other day of the year, any other event of the year, I think, uh, you know, you, you adjust, you learn. I, I didn't do what Mimi did. I love what she just said there. I, I wrote that down. Well, and then I got accused of not paying attention, but I was taking notes. <laughs> yeah. You, she, you she, can't win. <laughs> she she was doing a prelude. Is that what it was? Like a little, uh, I love it. I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, but I learned something here today. And I think that would make a huge difference. I love that, Mark. Yeah, she, she was doing like the, the whole cliff th cliffhanger email. Yeah. And on the next email. The Nancy Drew technique, ready. cliffhanger. We all talked about it in the mastermind. We all, Tate challenged everyone to come up with a plan. So we all did it. What we were going to do. It. A weekly reminder, right, Tate? Yep. Yeah. And uh, it looks like your hard work paid off for sure. Is she yeah, going to win with the click rate? Definitely. I mean, the click rate, that's, that's impressive. Mine was not nearly even 20%, which is interesting because we had a pretty successful Black Friday camp campaign. <clears throat> we were more like 15%. Which, again, that's not terrible, especially when you have a pretty large list. But 40% uh, uh, looks like I need to get on Mimi's buyers list. Even my weekly reminders were down 12, 11, 12, 15%. Yeah, I don't really feel bad for you, Mimi. Those are fantastic <laughs> numbers. I might take a picture of Mimi Schmidt and put it on my next buyers list. Maybe it'll be, that'll get my click rate up. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that, that might work better too for I'm you. I'll lay off of that. <laughs> so Tate, how did your how did your sales go? We did really well. Um, we uh, sold all of the properties that we had selected. It was uh, just under sixty five thousand worth of enterprise value. Um, so it was a good it was a good campaign for us. Um, and I know some people are going to hear this and be a little upset that maybe theirs didn't work as well, but that's okay. I think you got to remember you're competing with a ton of other companies. And this is a time of the year where having a large buyers list really pays off, right? I mean, 20% open rate, let's say you had uh, only a thousand people on it. It means 200 people are going to look at it. But if you had 10,000 people, well, all of a sudden you got enough real buyers there to where you can make an impact on things. So don't be upset. Don't be discouraged. You got to consistently show up and, if you did run a buyer or a Black Friday or Cyber Monday campaign and you didn't have the results you wanted, learn from them, right? Look at what you could do differently, make changes. And there's no secret formula or recipe to marketing. You got to try everything multiple times and learn from it every single, every single uh, week, basically. Yeah, I think what, you know, what I think was interesting was that you said the consistency so if you're consistently emailing your list and they know you're going to show up and essentially you're nurturing your list, the problem happens when you're not consistent and then all of a sudden you think, oh, well, it's Black Friday. I'm just going to email my list. Well, they're, they're not used to hearing from you. It's, it's like, you know, the neighbor you never talked to in the neighborhood, all of a sudden they're knocking on their door. You're like, whoa, who's this? And you're immediately sort of, you know, taken aback by it. Um, so that is, I think, sort of the, the key piece of this is throughout the year, you need to be nurturing your list with good information, valuable information and deals. And then when it's time to really do a big ask, they're, they're not surprised by it. They're ready for it. They want to buy because it's so obvious what a great deal this is compared to what they've been seeing from you throughout the year. Um, Scott Boffman, how about you, dude, buddy? 
Yeah, my open rate was a little lower than normal. Um, we still got a couple sales. Um, so we're looking at like a 12% open rate, but we did get a couple sales uh, this weekend. Um, couple one one lower value property and, and one pretty decent uh, return. Uh, we kind of ran a special all November, uh, no no doc fee all November, and um, uh, we got a number of sales in November, so that that really paid off. And then uh, ran a promo this weekend with uh, half half down payment, no no doc fee, no payments till uh, February first, and got a couple sales on that. So, I mean. It ended up uh, being a successful campaign, I think, uh, in the end. A successful November, for sure. So, Wow, that's, that's great. Um, Scott Todd, what are your thoughts on, uh, on the Scott Bossman uh, strategy? No down payment November and no payments until February. I, I like it. I just think that, like, my own opinion is that when you do something for a whole month, like, no down, no doc fee, November. It, it's good because it's themed, but at the same time, like that's a long time, right? Like it's a long time to, the people can just like, oh, there's no urgency. I have to the end of the month. And you know, what I want is I want that urgency, like immediately, like if I have to like keep changing up the deal every, every week, that's what I'd prefer to do because I want that urgency every single week, not just once a month or at the end of the month. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my big uh, fear, and hopefully it's un an unrealized fear, is when you lower the down payment too much or you, you extend out those payments until February, you're increasing the odds of a default. Now, if you know that going in and you're picking properties that you don't care if they default, I think it's, it's a great strategy. Um, Scott Boston, what were your thoughts on that going in? No, I agree. Uh, I I picked properties that um, I, I know I'm not going to lose money on for sure. Uh, so, or the properties I sold, uh, the, the numbers look great. Um, the buyers seem uh, good um, in my interactions with them. They were excited about the properties. So I would say based on my interaction with the, the couple say or a couple buyers that I had over the weekend, uh, I think the default rate, I, I don't think they're going to default based on my interaction with them, but I can definitely see that. Um, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to stand out from the crowd, right? When you're getting all these emails in November. I mean, even I was thinking myself this weekend, uh, looking at my email inbox, like it just gets lambasted, lambasted with hundreds of emails. So, so how to make yourself stand out, uh, is, you know, is a challenge. And, um, you know, we were just thinking of ways to, you know, how can we get people, uh, revved up to buy property in November and, uh, the no doc fee thing for us paid off. Uh, you know, we still got some significant money on the down. And uh, in the end, our numbers look really good. So. Fantastic. Fantastic. Scott Todd, how about you? Well, our, uh, I'm looking at the numbers right now. So our Black Friday open rate was 30%. Okay. And wow. uh, typical, typical weekly would be around 32%. And um, my thirty-two percent open rate. Yeah, my typical um, my typical click-through rate is eleven percent, and the Black Friday deal was six point one percent. So half the click-throughs that we would normally get. So I wasn't really excited about that number. However, um, when you look at the overall results, we sold uh, just shy of $72,000 worth of land over nine deals. So my average deal continued to, uh, to deliver around the $7,000 mark, 7,200 mark. That's, that's pretty consistent. Um, you know, all in all, not, not too bad. And, um, you know, it, it took some, some idle assets land and moved it out. And we'll see if uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if they they come through or if uh, we get some defaults. Yeah. So why is your open rate so high? Okay. So, oh man, this is like the abundance mentality right here. Okay. So like, here's the deal. Um, what happens is 
when you when you send an email and you send a lot of emails, like we send a lot of email through Landmoto, right? Like if you can imagine, our buyers list is pretty large. But what happens is when you send out a lot, you got to be careful of domain spamming. So you got to make sure that your domain is clean and that you're not, you know, you're not being sent just to the junk mail a lot. And that's a that's an ongoing challenge. And it's an ongoing challenge when when you're um, when you're trying to kind of break through the noise of all of these other companies. So, you, you know, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the whole weekend, I, I think that every email server in the world was like melting down with all the emails flying back and forth. So you gotta, you gotta really think through how this is gonna pan out for you. So what we do is we take people who have opened our emails in the past. These are the people that we know are, are openers. Okay, so we take our emails to them and we code them. So these are the openers. And what happens is we send the email to the openers first. So what happens is the emails servers of the world, like the Gmails, et cetera, they have seen a pattern of this person opening an email from this domain. So what happens is when they do that, boom, all of a sudden it gets sent right to their inbox. And then our openers, they go in and they open the emails. They do what we want them to do. They open them. And then what happens is we take the rest of the buyer's list about an hour and a half to two hours later, and we send the same email to the rest of the list. And when we do that, the, the email servers have seen, oh, I've seen this email. I've seen this go to other people. They've opened it. They haven't spammed it. They haven't unsubscribed. So now what happens is you take these emails and it goes right into their email box. So you're able to get and break through the noise, especially on a day where the email servers are looking for junk spam and, and everything. So that's what we do. We do that on a pretty regular basis. It's how we, uh, we maintain even our weekly email blast. So we do that and we're very religious about it. So it's a two part process and boom, we go in and we, we try to like break through the noise that way. Wow. Eric Peterson, that might be the tip of the week right there. Yeah. It that's is, that, that is excellent. I agree, that's great info. What, what's so great about that is a lot of us don't even think about deliverability rates. We just take it for granted that if we're using an Aweber or MailChimp, Constant Contact, Drip. Um, yeah. What's up, another fancy one, Eric, that you're using? Convert Kit. Convert Kit. That, yeah. Because they are the email service providers, they're already seen as being in a good neighborhood and they're going to deliver those emails. But Scott, you're debunking that in a sense and saying, hey, no, not necessarily. So do this two-part email process. You know it's going to be delivered and then you're going to really spike up your open rates, which is sort of a, a, a virtual cycle then in that sense because then you're that first batch of emails are getting open more and then you start approaching Mimi numbers. Yeah. And then the, then the second piece of that, so that's phase one. And the second phase of it is that we go back and um, typically around like two days later, we will go back and we will send to the, to the unopens. And so like when you look at the people that, that did not open, um, originally. So here, I'll break it down a little bit further. So of our original blast that went out, 24% was the open rate. So when we originally sent out to that, to the, to everybody, it was a 24% response rate. And then after that, when we remailed, so we mailed everybody on the 27th. So that was what well, Wednesday, Wednesday. So we emailed everybody on Wednesday before all of the traffic started coming out. And then what happened was actually on Black Friday, around 1130, we re-hit the people that had not opened the email. And uh, so then that produced another basically 11% response rate. So when you merge the two together, you're at, you're at 30%. So you do have to re-hit the people that haven't opened it because it may have gone to their junk folder. It may have gone, like it may have just gone further. And then what we do is, we put it as like, um, we put it as like, almost like a forward 
and we say a little message like, hey, I just want to make sure you saw this. And so now all of a sudden it's coming back to them. And, you know, that's, that's how we got the combined 30, literally 30% even open rate or click through. Yeah. Open rate. Sorry. I, I yeah, that's, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Um, so if you're listening to this, please implement that. Even if you have a small list, it's just a good habit to get into. And I think it makes you more intentional with your list as well. Because at the end of the day, that is your best asset. It's the only thing you really own. Craigslist you don't own, they can change their algorithm, which they do all the time. Same thing with Facebook, even though Mimi thinks she can you know, crack it at any point in time. Even Mimi is still subject to the algorithm that can constantly be changing on these big platforms. Hell, heck, even Landmodo might one day um, you know, the server could go down, whatever it is. I doubt it, not knowing, knowing Scott Todd, but it could, right? You don't own it. And, but what you do own is that email list. And so even spending that little extra time, um, increasing your deliverability, increasing your open rates can make a huge difference to the bottom line. Well, I, I thought this was a, a great topic uh, for discussion. Eric Peterson, anything else you wanna add? No, I mean, I, I would just, I guess the, the last comment on it would be to uh, really take to heart what Scott said. I think he offered some really great advice for anybody that's managing a buyer's list and sending out regular emails. Um, there's some stuff there that he talked about that, that he hasn't talked about before. And um, I think it could greatly increase your deliverability of your emails. All right, fantastic. Um, on office hours, Eric, what would you say was one of your bigger takeaways from that group? So the general consensus in office hours was, um, you know, people, our students struggled getting their emails opened for their Black Friday deals. And one of the things we talked about was the fact that um, a lot of that email was going out during kind of prime time, if you will, from Black Friday through Cyber Monday. And we talked about, you know, think about the emails you got in your inbox during that time and what you did with them. Did you look at them all? Did you do a mass delete because there were so many? Because um, I know that's what I did. You know, I had way too many emails. I didn't want to look at them. So I knew they were all Black Friday deals and I just selected them and deleted them. Um, so I think the takeaway there is that uh, you really need to come in advance of Black Friday. You need to start to talk about your deals before they're going to happen, build that anticipation, and then, you know, maybe release over time those deals so that there's that urgency that, uh, you know, I've got to got to be available when that one comes available. I, I want to get that property or, or whatever it is. Um, and the last thing to consider there is, you know, maybe you don't want to do a Black Friday or Cyber Monday sale. Instead, maybe you want to go the week before or the week after or some other special holiday that, that you're going to focus your big sales on to, to get out of the noise of, of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Hey, just along those same lines, uh, the one person the one thing that I did buy over this kind of crazy Cyber Monday, Black Friday um, was from a company that they sent out their Black Friday specials a week early and their headline was really clever. It was, oops, did we choose the wrong Friday? And I, I thought that was interesting because they knew being a smaller company that they were going to have to cut through the noise and they knew that they couldn't when competing against the marketing giants of, you know, Target and Walmart and all these other companies. So what did they do? They said, oh, we can run it a week early. It doesn't matter to us. And uh, it resulted at least in one sale with me buying something from their, from their website. So my hat goes off to those guys who got creative, recognized that they were, you know, trying to compete and make noise and, and they did. So. Hey, Mark, I'll just say, yeah. I'll just say one more thing is that if you look at the big companies and their marketing, it was not a one and done. Okay. Like that's a big difference too. one and done. Like I just sent my email out 
and everybody's going to love me and they're going to open up the email. That's wrong. And so like the larger companies, what are they doing? Well, there's, they're, they're like sending three emails a day. Okay. Like they're inundating me, like they're changing it up. And so oftentimes what, what I find is that people are afraid to do that because they're afraid of the unsubscribes, right? Like, Oh my gosh, these people are going to unsubscribe. Well, I have to tell you something like, I always hate seeing the unsubscribed number, but the, the spin on it or the antidote that I tell myself is they weren't going to buy anyway and one less person to pay for because once you have a very large list, you start paying by the number of users you have and it gets expensive. So just, just imagine everybody that's opting out and unsubscribing, they weren't going to buy from you anyway. Bye-bye. Yeah. Speaking of marketing, there are four components to every ad that we write. And if you want to know what those four are, I go over them extensively at boot camp. And the next boot camp is in San Antonio, January 10th, 10th through 12th. There are still spots available. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash boot camp to sign up. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, because you don't have two free tickets, because you're not in flight school, you don't have the toolkit, get on a call. Talk to the Zen master, talk to the nightcap OG and learn more about how can I be in that room and just go to landgeek.com forward slash training to learn more about those pieces. I, I thought this was a, a really informative podcast and, um, you know, certainly it's not really a great round table podcast until we pick on Mimi Schmidt and ask her for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Mimi, what do you have? So not fair. I have to go after Scott with that great tip. This is it. This, this tip actually put my husband to sleep on the couch with his hand on the iPad. It was so boring. Okay. But <laughs> no, no reason to, to, you know, start pumping it up, Mimi. You know, maybe you should play it down a little bit. <laughs> but you're on mute. Now, so I have an HRP and uh, it is not a Roth and I'm gonna have to track it for forever for tax purposes with the land that I flip in there. So this is, I have a second EQRP that I'm doing a Roth conversion on. So these are the rules behind it and the how to, so. It's the end of the year. We got to start thinking about those kind of things, right? I, I, I find this really fascinating, actually. I don't, I don't think this is boring at all. So yeah, I'm gonna, I need to pay some taxes now to keep me from paying taxes later when I have a lot more money. Yeah, a, how does a Roth conversion work? How did you do it? This you is, pay, this you pay is, the tax on it. It be like a million dollar tip. So yeah, it's worth looking at if you have any QRP or you know you're using money from uh, retirement funds to fund your business. So. All right, fantastic. Um, that's a great tip. Yeah. Uh, Scott Todd actually gave a really great tip earlier on a podcast that's probably not going to come out for three or four months. Scott, do you want to give that, that tip because that's it's kind of the time of year. Uh, or do you want to save it? I'm trying, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think what it was. It was, uh, it was, it was the momentum one. Oh, oh, yep. Good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Look, check this out. Let me pull it back up again. Oh, look, it's right here. I got it right here. It uh, in the chat, check out givemomentum.com. And what's cool about this app is, you know, giving is always a good thing, but it's also a hard thing to give, right? Like it's, it's a hard because you have to make a purpose decision to go do it. So you got to say like, okay, well, I'm going to write, go write this check. And we all know that the best things in life are all automated. And so if you visit givemomentum.com, it is an app that will automate the giving process. And it's pretty cool how it does it too. It does it almost like an IFTTT which means if this, then that, it's a way of automating things. So just imagine you can set up, you can set up, um, you know, like, hey, for every time President Trump tweets, 10 cents goes to this charity. Or for every cup of coffee I buy at McDonald's, 
round up to the nearest dollar and give it to the, the homeless shelter. So you can do all of these things. You can pre-program them. And so as you go through your day, all of a sudden the money goes to charity. And you might say, well, Matt, how much is this going to cost me? Well, the cool thing is that you can set up a monthly limit. So you can say, I, I want to I donate $150 a month or I want to donate you know, $10 a month, whatever you can give. And the app will go through. And once you meet that cutoff, it will stop doing it. But it will automate your giving based on events in your life. I think that's pretty cool. I love it. I mean, how granular can I get? Can I say every time Mike Zano can't pronounce an R, I'll give a dollar. To, uh, it, know, the app that. needs to be able to to track it. So I'm not sure how that would no work. No one's tracking but, me. But, <laughs> may, <laughs> but maybe, maybe if, how many R's were in there, Mark? No one's tracking me. I, but no one, one, one R, two R's, two R's. Two R's, so you just cost you like two bucks or something. I don't know. Because there's two R's in tracking. No, no. He can't pronounce the R like cock the car. Right. So well, why don't we just say every time he says an R, you got to give a dollar or something. Okay, fine. I'll be just going, R, 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 Yeah. Oh, he just cost you a lot of money. You know, from from I love that Tony Robbins quote which is, you know, suffering is an, excess, an excessive focus on yourself. And here's an automated way to not even, to give without even having to think about it. Um, I know like I'm guilty of this when I go on Amazon. I don't always think about going on, is it smile.amazon.com, which would then, you know, give a portion of that purchase to your, your, your charity of choice. Is that what it is? Is it smile? I have it as a, yeah. Yeah. It's a smile. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes it so easy, but I still don't, you know, it's not on my app. I have to go to my website. It's, it still doesn't make it that automated. I don't think unless I'm doing something wrong, but it's great. So, all right. Well, great podcast. Um, and Mimi, great tip of the week, Scott, great tip of the week. Um, I want to thank the listeners and just remember, you know, remind them the only way that we're going to get Eric and Mimi back on the round table is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit, as well as how to double your money 30 days or less in our new wholetailing course. All right. Are we ready to do this? One, two, three, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Went a little too fast in that freedom part. But that was good. That was really good. So Thanksgiving, did, did everybody overeat? Me and you overeat? You overeat? Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I'm yeah, and leftovers. Oh my goodness, so it's, good. It's so good, isn't it? So good. Yeah, um, Eric, did you jump on the Peloton after? You know, I finally got the Peloton set back up. This uh, well, I guess it was probably right around Thanksgiving, and yes, indeed, I have been on it ever since it's uh, been up and running again. Every day. Every day, even while I didn't have it, I was still using the app every day. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Jeff Detmer just posted Basecamp 21 days straight. Wow. Awesome. That's, that's why we call him the, the executioner, which I don't think he <laughs> likes as a nickname. Um, yeah, I, so we, uh, we didn't do turkey this year. We did Cornish hen. So much thing. It was a very highbrow Thanksgiving, Cornish. <laughs> I ever it felt very fancy. No, it was great. It was really good. Um, and my our our neighbors, uh, we had extra, so we we brought over some of our our neighbors. Their their son was sick, so that felt good to give as well. So I didn't have any leftovers. That's okay. 
Did, no. did, you, uh, did you guys see anything good on Black Friday or Cyber Monday? I mean, I know, you know, Mike Zeno's razors were on sale, the supply, get supply. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I bought a whole year's supply of Bic. <laughs> oh. oh, I got one. My, my wife bought me, I showed Mark and uh, Mike this yesterday. My wife bought me um, uh, a series of 15 Star Wars socks <sighs> to build up to the Christmas holiday. So I oh. have... I have 15 pair of socks to build up to the movie and to Christmas. All different Star Wars characters, which so I just cool. thought was amazing. That's so cool. So yeah. cool. Who wears that? Your son? <laughs> That's funny. You have them on now? <laughs> no, because I it's 15 days before Christmas, so I gotta oh. I gotta time it out. Yeah. Oh. So he starts on the you can wear them every other day yeah. right now. Yeah. I could wear them every other day. That's true. Or two days in a row. Two days in a row. What's the problem? <laughs> kind of like an advent calendar, right? You get one Yeah. Them. They're my advent socks. It nope. starts on the 10th. That's funny. Now, do you, do you watch Mandalorian while wearing the socks? Oh, I will this Friday. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've only watched the first episode, but so far, so good. Oh, Josh, have great. you... Have you uh, have you seen the the Star Wars hotel they're building at Disney World? I have. I got to make it there. Except yeah, it's yeah. like a thousand dollars a night or something, isn't it? What? Something I don't ridiculous. know. I haven't looked at the price, but you know, come on, man. It's but baller money. Like two notes for you, Scott. Yeah. What's the problem, yeah. man? Just yeah. sell a piece no. of land and you're golden. Yeah. Yeah. I only need like three rooms for my family. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen, no one's saying you have to bring them with you. You can come That's by true. yourself. I could do a solo trip. Oh, oh pun. Solo trip. Never mind. Ah. Ah. That was a good one, Zeno. That was good. <laughs> oh, there's the Mark, logo board. Mark, I didn't see any anything. Like, I didn't find anything on Black Friday or Cyber Monday. I was really kind of depressed, right? Like, I was looking to like I know I was contacting you and Tate. Like, what are you guys finding? What are you guys finding? Nobody had anything. What did I miss? Nah. I didn't uh, see anything uh, good. Eric just sent the fluid stands. Yeah, you could have got your your standing board. You could still get it. Buy one, get one. When you buy a level. But you and Mark can split it. I, I'm those, standing those things on this, cost uh, they cost 250 bucks those things yeah oh look man you could get a fleet of them hey you get a fleet for for two grand <laughs> are you on it right now eric i am i you still every good? time i'm standing i'm on it and you don't get tired no all right maybe i should get it because like i'm standing on this cushion and i still get sore hmm. from standing too long hmm I don't know. All right, I'll get it. What are the purported benefits of the? Just takes uh, takes pressure off your back and spine, and well, just allows you to like shift your weight around. Does it help your core? Tighten your core? No. I don't know. I mean, it's to me, it's not that hard to balance. I feel like if it was hard to balance, maybe maybe it would be good for your core. But yeah, I don't know. I don't find it to be that challenging per se but i just like that i can kind of move around a little bit and spin and whatever but see the pt in me would say just stand on a couch cushion <laughs> <laughs> so we do it the little old ladies you know stand on yeah. couch cushions or pillows or whatever <laughs> what 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 does that do though if you stand on a couch cushion oh it improves your balance so a lot of a lot of a lot of older people have problems with their balance, so you want to challenge their balance in order to uh, improve their proprioception. Is this while it's on the couch? Probably not while it's on the couch. That would not be a that would be a safety hazard. If they have good balance, he instructs them to stand on three couch cushions stacked on yes. top of each other, oh, no. on one leg with your eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fake. <laughs> The laugh or the comment? I don't know. 
Scott's response. I don't believe it. I don't believe that. No, for, for athletes after surgery, I, I would have them progress from uh, an uneven surface uh, standing on one leg to, to an uneven surface standing on one leg with their eyes closed. It's a, it ac actually is a, it's a progressive balance exercise to improve your proprioception after injury or surgery. Tate, you'll probably be doing some of that stuff yeah. uh, in the future. Just, de Just don't try it yet. So, so don't get the fluid stance, Scott Bossman, because I always get like a little paranoid at boot camp because I, I, you watch everybody and how they're walking. I just want to be, oh, I, you know, a little bit have like a stronger core than Peterson, but you'll know. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's my boy. It, it's funny. We go to the mall and I'm, I'm like, hey, Ben, that guy's hip is weak or that guy's got, you know, a stiff ankle or whatever. So they make fun of me. But yeah, it's just the PT in me. I don't know what it is. But uh, I don't, yeah. Get it, Mark. Tell us what you think. <laughs> what do you think of that thing that I what have to think? compete now in San Antonio? <laughs> what do you think of that thing that beeps and makes you sit up straight, Scott? Is that good? You know, have you all seen that? That thing you wear around your neck and beep. Yeah, 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 I saw that thing. Is that worth getting? I mean, you could you could just set a little timer on your desk to you know uh, remind yourself to sit up straight every thirty seconds. Oh, it's a good idea. No, but this thing like like buzzes you. <laughs> well, like if you're if like, you like are like this, it'll, it. Oh, okay, I got it, you. It, so it, it when when you slouch, you. when you slouch, it gives you it. It makes you correct. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see what that'd probably be a decent thing. I don't know the price point on it. But I, I'm imagining it's somewhere around the fluid stance price. Yeah, I think so. I think they have them at Apple, actually. Huh. The surface but, make one? Was, Microsoft make that? <laughs> well, I don't I think Microsoft probably has one, but basically it's just it's just a virus that then <laughs> you know just shocks you for no reason. I am yeah. upstate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly. You know. It, it's it's like some kind of subliminal messaging. Did you get an Xbox this Christmas? <laughs> Like, oh, Xbox. Oh, man. I don't know. All right. Tate's got that, that far off look in his eye. Like, He's all right, are we going to keep, we gonna keep chatting here? There's, there's nothing worse than a hangry Tate. Can we all agree on this? <laughs> well, you know what a hangry Tate is? Hate. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. That's good, Mike. That's original. I, I think we got our, I think we got our, uh, our episode title. Hate plus hangry equals hate. <laughs> uh, oh. All right. Thanks everybody. Thanks Mark.